Giovanni, the ex-leader of the Viridian Gym and the main head boss of Team Rocket. For years, this man has been a recurring character across the Pokemon series. He has appeared several times across Pokemon media, in the Pokemon games, the anime, anime shorts, and even the manga. No matter where he is, Giovanni is always known to have some sort of strong presence. The reason for that strong presence is because of his reputation of being an evil leader of one of the biggest crime syndicates of the Pokemon world. He has this strong reputation and is feared practically everywhere. But the question is, how strong is Giovanni really? Today, we find that out by taking a look at his appearances across the Pokemon franchise and analyzing Team Rocket, his accomplishments, titles, Pokemon he has owned, and a few other factors that really delve into what he is. Giovanni has always interested me as a character, and I can't wait to see just how strong the dude is. Before we fully get started though, remember that currently right now, over on our gaming channel Mystic Zora, we have the best Team for Kanto Remastered Let's Play going on right now, so be sure to check that out in the description and in the icon card above. Also be sure to check out our anime channel Mystic Sage and my other social media platforms. Links for those will also be in the description and icon card. With that being said, I hope you enjoy the video. I want to first take a look at Giovanni's appearances in the games. Giovanni's first appearance was in Pokemon Red and Blue, where he was the leader of Team Rocket, literally the biggest evil organization in the entire franchise. Team Rocket took over the entire Kanto region, running the Game Corner, and eventually taking over one of the biggest tech companies in the Pokemon world, Sylph. Giovanni had chosen to take over Sylph due to his ambitions of wanting technology to benefit Team Rocket. The true technology they were after, though, was the Master Ball. The Master Ball, as we all know, can capture any Pokemon without fail. Team Rocket took over an entire corporation and city just to advance their endeavors. These guys literally do not care as long as they get more powerful. And when I mean they don't care, I mean they truly don't care. Let's take a look at some of their actions that display this kind of behavior. For starters, Team Rocket goes from scamming people in the game corner to eventually killing Pokemon like Cubone's mother at the Pokemon Tower, followed by cutting off Slowpoke Tails in Azalea Town, and then forcing Magikart to evolve into Gyarados at the Lake of Rage. Why do they partake in these cruel ventures? To make money and to gain power. I have never heard of any other team in the franchise that kills Pokemon and then openly talks about it. Team Rocket is the first evil team ever introduced, and even now, they are definitely the most evil. All of this violence and cruelty comes from Giovanni's lust for control and power. With all of this in mind, however, he is eventually defeated by a young trainer named Red, who is able to put an end to the organization's reign of terror. Well, at least temporarily. Earlier, I mentioned the Johto games, and the Johto games take place three years later after Red defeated Giovanni. Giovanni actually wound up leaving Team Rocket, but that didn't stop his team's loyalty for Giovanni's ambitions. After finding out Giovanni had fled Team Rocket and hit off somewhere, his admins all got together and began taking over the Sevi Islands, which takes place in the post game of Pokemon Fire and Leaf Green. This was just the first step, though, as they began to take over Johto without their true leader. These guys are so powerful that they were able to profit off Slowpoke Tails, sort of hide out in Mahogany, forcing Magikarp to evolve, and then eventually taking over the biggest tool of communication in the entire Pokemon world, the radio tower in Goldenrod City. They did all of this to bring their leader back. The fact that Team Rocket even functioned and worked in the way it did without Giovanni is insane. His organization looked up to him that much that they continued his plans without him. We know Giovanni's reputation and power is respected due to the loyalty Team Rocket has for him. Not to mention everyone in Kanto and Johto tremble when they hear the name Team Rocket. This dude made a mob gang killing Pokemon and used them as tools to accomplish what him and his team have done. They even took over companies, and nobody could stop them. Well, besides 10-year-old children, but that's besides the point. Unfortunately, though, for the evil boss, he is eventually defeated again by Gold or Lyra in the Johto remakes. There is a Celebi that allows them to go back in time and defeat him at his hideout in Tojo Falls, thus stopping him from going back to Team Rocket. However, that doesn't stop Giovanni from appearing in future games, though. In Pokemon Black and White 2, he appears in the Pokemon World Tournament, and proclaims himself to be the world's strongest Pokemon trainer. In Ultra Sun and Moon, he comes back as the leader of Rainbow Rocket, who actually succeeded as the leader of Team Rocket from a different dimension. The Rainbow Rocket Giovanni took over the Aether Paradise, kidnapped Lusamine, made a Team Rainbow Rocket castle, and summoned other leaders who succeeded in their plans to help him out with his grand scheme of creating an army of Ultra Beasts. Oh, and did I mention that Giovanni also has a Mewtwo that has the ability to Mega Evolve into either Mewtwo X or Y? This dude 
is so powerful and also so evil. That's honestly what makes him into such a bad dude. Giovanni just never stops. He's got ambitions off the walls and he's not afraid to put his hands on blood to get what he wants. I say blood because remember, this dude is not afraid to kill Pokemon. Now if we take Team Rocket away from the equation, let's remember also that Giovanni was once the leader of the Viridian City Gym. In all of his gym appearances, he is a ground type gym leader who hands out the Earth Badge. His team of Pokemon are also pretty powerful as well, boasting anything from a Nidoqueen, Nidoking, Rhydon, and a couple other ones. To become a gym leader, you have to be a pretty skilled Pokemon trainer. And even in the anime, he has a wide array of Pokemon to choose from. Going into a few other Pokemon he owns, he has a Persian in Let's Go, which is very resembling of the anime, and is also seen with the Kangaskhan in a couple of other games as well. These Pokemon are all pretty powerful, and it goes back to the notion that Giovanni was a very reputable Pokemon trainer beforehand. I will get more into that history in a little bit, but for now, let's hop into the anime. Now when talking about the anime, Giovanni and Team Rocket as a whole come off a little more lighthearted in a lot of ways. They definitely still are bad guys, but they don't really feel as evil as their game counterparts for the most part. However, that is just the nature of the anime and doesn't really change Giovanni's core of being a powerful adversary with an evil nature. The anime, I feel, is actually able to convey just how powerful Giovanni is a lot better than the games, as it is able to do far more grandiose things. I mean, when you see all the military-like technology Team Rocket has access to, and all the crazy machines built for individual missions, you know this organization has to have bank. And when one of the primary ways Team Rocket makes money by capturing and selling Pokemon, clearly they're seeing success in that evil endeavor. I know this is just really hyperbolic for the sake of being entertaining for the audience, but that doesn't change much really in my opinion. For a large portion of the anime, Giovanni is really just an intimidating force to the Team Rocket trio rather than everyone as a whole. In fact, we mostly see him in the trio's fantasies about making him happy. Where we finally see how cunning Giovanni is, is in the Pokemon movie and the follow-up special Mewtwo Strikes Back and Mewtwo Returns. Mewtwo is brought into existence by Dr. Fuji's cloning at the orders of Giovanni, who forced the poor creature to submit to his will. Mewtwo eventually went berserk and escaped Giovanni's clutches, and the rest is history. Giovanni, while being important to his backstory, was not really a big antagonist in the movie. However, that changed when it came to the special sequel, Mewtwo Returns. The Rocket boss actively seeks out Mewtwo, finding it and the clone Pokemon living in peace, then actively tries to force it to submit to him yet again. When Mewtwo refuses to comply, Giovanni threatens to capture the clone Pokemon and subject them to experiments that would likely kill them all. This is definitely one of the most evil things in the entire series and is a huge sidestep from the normal clumsy and foolish nature that Team Rocket has given off in the anime thus far. But after that, Giovanni doesn't really appear too much as any sort of main villain. He's just presented as the looming, ominous figure in the background that he always has been from the get-go. It wasn't until the black and white anime that Giovanni would take on a much larger role than we were used to. Keeping in regular contact with the Rocket Trio really asserted his role as their boss, and even making straight-up appearances in Unova to take care of business himself. The biggest role he had in Unova was the capturing of Meloetta in order to take control of the forces of nature and using their power to take control of the Unova region. His plan ultimately failed when he accidentally looked into the revealed glass himself and began destroying the Unova region instead. He had to be stopped by Jesse, James, and Meowth and did eventually retreat from Unova, but not without almost causing mass devastation. And how could I not mention that during this time, he actually battled with Ash for the first time in over a decade, and guess what? He actually managed to beat him and his all-powerful Pikachu with his own iconic Persian. Giovanni might not be getting his own hands dirty that often, but cases like these are what truly solidifies him as a force to be reckoned with. Now since then, Giovanni has yet again reverted back to just a supporting role for the goofy Team Rocket members that we're used to. But as the series goes on, Giovanni still manages to keep his presence as the boss all of Team Rocket wants to impress. Who knows, perhaps we will see some sort of large nefarious scheme from him at some point in Journeys since we're no longer tied down to one region in particular, but time will have to tell with that one. Moving on to a different side of the anime, we have Giovanni in Pokemon Origins. As this series is but just a short four episodes, his appearance is a lot less long-lived, but he has a ton of impact nonetheless. Origins basically just plays out the events of the original Red and Blue, but with a bit more personality behind the characters. When it comes to Giovanni, the wicked ways of Team Rocket are still shown, especially in the killing of Cubone's mother. 
At the end, Giovanni faces off against Red at the Viridian Gym and shows him absolutely no mercy, easily beating most of his team with just a single Pokemon. But as Red starts to make his comeback, Giovanni feels an excitement that he hasn't felt in a very long time. We flash back to Giovanni's childhood, where he is reminded of his love for Pokemon and battling. His battle with Red makes him see the errors of how he's lived, seeing Pokemon as only tools for his personal gain. Red eventually is able to beat Giovanni, who is in complete disbelief at his loss. When Red refuses to accept his gym badge, as he is the leader of Team Rocket, he makes the immediate decision of disbanding Team Rocket, and tells Red what he needs to do in order to reach greater heights. As Red rides off, Giovanni encourages Red to follow the path that he should have taken, while he thinks of what new path he should follow. This is a decent deviation from the games, as he disbanded Team Rocket out of the embarrassment of his own loss, and went on the train to form an even more powerful Team Rocket, not really learning from his transgressions. But here, we see a change of heart, which is just a truly interesting take on Giovanni. I gotta say, I actually like that a lot, and wouldn't have been upset if that was the story the game had decided to tell instead. So one last section I want to go over is definitely Pokemon Generations. In Pokemon Generations, Episode 2, The Chase, it shows Looker and an entire gang of police looking for Giovanni. In doing so, they bring up his accomplishments and how he has also taken over the Kanto region's underworld and is suspected of illegally trafficking and poaching Pokemon. They then go into having arrested several Team Rocket grunts, but none of them budge or snitch on him. None of them. They are that loyal to him and respect him that much. Shortly after, they discover Giovanni may be at the Viridian Gym. When going to the Viridian Gym, Looker brings out the SWAT team, police cars, and several men that take him down. This dude had the entire Kanto police force practically called on him. They even have Machamp breaking down walls and Arcanine melting them. What's hilarious though, is even after all that effort, it was futile. Giovanni had escaped minutes before they arrived and even had the time to give out two more badges to the winning trainers. I'm pretty sure we all know who those two trainers are and we know Giovanni respects them. Giovanni however gets away and at the final moment of the episode he says, Team Rocket will never fall. All Pokemon exist solely for the use of Team Rocket. The dude had the entire police force after him. And I can say for sure, he is definitely on Kanto's most wanted list. But even after all that, he still outsmarted all those cops. All I can say is what a guy. So overall, across all forms of Pokemon media, there are a few things that are consistent with Giovanni. He's incredibly powerful in both terms of influence and battle prowess and is certainly someone to be feared. Looking at him in retrospect, he's basically just the idea of a modern day Yakuza boss. And I think that archetype is what makes him so powerful because it's just so close to our own reality at its core. You have so many evil team leaders that want to take over the world, make a new dimension, or whatever. But in most cases, Giovanni just wants money and influence over people. Clearly, it's effective too, as we've felt this presence for nearly 25 years now. And quite frankly, I wouldn't be surprised if we felt it for another 25. Well, that pretty much wraps up this analysis on how strong Giovanni is. I know some of you are probably going to go comment down below and be like, you forgot the Adventures manga. And I will tell you, I actually want to do an entire video dedicated to manga at some point and explain how Giovanni is over there. Pretty much though, he's more ruthless and has nearly half the gym leaders as subordinates. He's just as powerful there as he is in the games. In the future though, I want to tackle Pokemon manga based stuff. I think it could be fun, and I believe you guys would probably enjoy it more or less. Regardless of that though, I hope you guys enjoyed this video about Giovanni, and if you guys want more, let me know what character you want to see next. If you enjoyed the video, why not leave a like and subscribe to my channel with notifications on, that way you never miss an upload. If you want to support me further, consider following my Twitch where I stream all sorts of games from Pokemon, to Fire Emblem, to Zelda, and much more. I also have an anime channel called Mystic Sage, where I do anime reviews, rankings, and countdowns. So if you're interested in that kind of content, go ahead and check that out as well. If you want to support me even further and gain cool perks, check out my Patreon. These lovely people have all given me their support over there and I couldn't be more grateful to them. I think I'm wrapping this up though. I'm Mystic Umbreon and I will see you in the future for more awesome Pokemon content.